the other big story I think of the last uh, week has been what's going on in Iran. I don't know if you've been following this, but again, horrible and inspiring at the same time. Um, you, you know, uh, um, last week, uh, or, or maybe it's more than a week ago now, uh, you know, in, in Iran, there are these religious commandments, the, the religious laws, the women uh, in public have to be covered. They have to cover their hair, they have to cover their face. Uh, but the hair has to be covered. Right? I think the face can be uh, uh, revealed so they don't have to literally wear her job, but the hair has to be covered completely. And it's against the law. And if, you, you, if the women doesn't, don't cover the hair, they can get arrested. Uh, and uh, this, this uh, young woman, 22 years old, uh, was a Kurdish woman. So from the uh, northwest of Iran, the Kurdish section of Iran, was visiting Tehran um, and uh, and had her hair covering, but but supposedly didn't cover enough of the hair, uh, according to the religious police in Tehran. She was arrested, and it it turns out that she at the police station was beaten, and ultimately beaten to death. The Iranians claimed that she had some kind of heart attack. Or, it, 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 this was a healthy young woman. Uh, no reason for her to have a heart attack. Uh, maybe she did die of a heart attack, but because she was beaten basically into into death, um, into her body basically failing, all because she didn't cover a few strands of hair. Uh, the response started out uh, in the Kurdish area of Iran. The Kurds are, of course, a minority within Iran. It's an oppressed minority pretty much everywhere in the Middle East. There's a massive Kurdish population in, uh, you know, in world, after World War I, when the France and, 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 the, and the English divvied up the Middle East, the one ethnic group they didn't allocate a country to, the one big ethnic group, tens of millions of people, they didn't allocate a country to were the Kurds. And there is a very large population of Kurds in Iran, a very, very large population of Kurds in Turkey, and a very large population of Kurds in Syria and in Iraq. And uh, in Iraq, they have some autonomy uh, that they have basically won uh, through battle. Uh, but uh, in, in Turkey, they've been trying to carve out their own states, and uh, Turkey has declared them terrorists, the, 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 the Kurdish independence movement. And of course, uh, you know about the Kurds in Syria because, uh, because Trump betrayed them. They were the ones who helped the Americans defeat ISIS, and then Trump basically said to Erdogan, um, uh, the, the, the authoritarian in Turkey, yeah, you can come into Iraq, uh, Syria and, 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 take, and take the Kurds and kill the Kurds. Uh, but anyway, um, the Kurds have a real presence in, in, in Iran. Um, and uh, uh, I did a whole show on how he betrayed them. So you can go back and find the show on, on just horrible. I mean, or you could read, uh, you could read uh, uh, what's his name? His, uh, his advisor, his uh, national security advisor, his uh, uh, account of how he betrayed the Kurds uh, in his in, in in his book. I forget the name now again of uh, um, Bolton, John Bolton, who I saw in Korea. John Bolton has a great account of how Trump on a phone call randomly, in spite of Bolton arguing against it, uh, Trump just stabbed the Kurds in the back. But again, I'm putting that aside. Um, I did a whole show on it when it happened. Uh, anyway, the Kurds in northwest Iran, uh, there were massive demonstrations uh, about this woman who had been killed and, 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 and had family uh, in that area, and, uh, and uh, they were obviously super upset and, and uh, you know, incensed about the fact that she had been murdered. Well, those demonstrations have now, those demonstrations have now uh, spread, uh, initially to Tehran and now to a lot of the all the major cities in Iran and beyond. Uh, so they've spread uh, beyond the major cities to smaller cities. These are some of the largest demonstrations, uh, probably larger than the ones in 2019 and maybe even as large or larger than the ones in 2009. In 2019, the demonstrations were primarily economic, uh, about the economic hardships uh, that, that were placed on Iran because of the sanctions. Um, 
nothing came of that. The 2009 demonstrations were massive. Uh, that was around a stolen election that people thought felt that the election was stolen, that a moderate should have won instead of uh, Amin Ajad, who was a who is a, 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 a much more you know consistent religionist, hard right religionist, and um, in 2009 there was a real. I think opportunity to have overthrown the regime and really to make a dent in the regime's power, and and the Obama administration just just was pathetic. Uh, it could have supported it, it could have supported both with moral uh, courage, it, it could have smuggled weapons in, it could have done a lot of things, uh, but they did very little, if anything. They were too busy negotiating a, a a nuclear deal with the Iranians, and and they didn't pay attention to this real pro at least to some extent, pro-freedom, uh, 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 at least to some extent, freedom in, in Iran, an anti the clerical regime. Anyway, that opportunity was lost, maybe lost forever, but there might be an opportunity right now. I mean, the demonstrations right now are unique. They're about freedom. They're about the treatment of women. Um, you're seeing things that you've never seen before in Iran. Uh, you're seeing, A, you're seeing people fighting back against the police. You're seeing them beating up the police. You're seeing women burning their hijabs. You're seeing them taking out and, and, and putting them in the street and burning them and being cheered on by men for doing that. So, um, uh, you know, these are not the same conservative men of, of the past. This is a, a different generation. This is the generation from the last 20 years who've grown up uh, under these this uh, uh, theocratic regime, don't believe in this theocracy, and are finally fighting back. Uh, you're seeing women. Uh, there was a there was a, some video of a woman in the middle of these demonstrations cutting her hair, uh, which is short, which is against illegal, and you know without hair covering in in public, uh, and that being cheered on by men. Uh, you're seeing the demonstrations spread. You're seeing it being led by women. You know, in 2019, they're estimating that the regime killed 1,500 people in order to quell. Uh, the demonstration. So far, the regime has not been as violent, so only by official measures, maybe 30, 40, 50 people have been killed. We'll see if this spreads and becomes worse. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, we will see. This is worth watching. The president of Iran, who is a real conservative, real, uh, real theocratic conservative um, Iranian uh, mullah, uh, has come out and said, we're going to crush this. So you can expect an escalation of violence in Iran. We'll see whether the demonstrators keep fighting back. We'll see whether this uh, gets outside of the control of the local police. We'll see if they have to bring in the military and troops and the National Guard. Um, this could get ugly and horrific. Um, the good one of the, one of the more positive uh, things that have happened is that Iran shut down the internet. So they've, they've blocked all the internet access in Iran. So what happened was um, the Biden administration, this is to their credit, the Biden administration said, okay, we know we have sanctions against Iran, but anybody who wants to sell equipment into Iran for them to get internet access, so any connection with Iranians for the purpose of giving them access to the internet, is we're, we're releasing that from sanctions, so we're eliminating the sanctions. Immediately, and I think this was coordinated with Elon Musk, immediately Elon Musk said that uh, he is activating Starlink um, over Iran, and, uh, and they're going to try to smuggle in, and they're going to try to sell into Iran the dishes, right, uh, Starlink dishes. So they're going to try to get internet access to the Iranians. And again, th this was facilitated by the Biden administration releasing because Musk couldn't have done it without the Biden administration saying, um, you know, we, we, won't, we won't prosecute Musk for providing services in Iran because of the sanctions. So uh, let's hope we can get a bunch of satellite equipment into the Iranians, into the demonstrators, let them get dishes. Um, one of the things that's happening is the Iranians now have... have, have learned from the Arab Spring, from other demonstrations around the world. They learned how to use social media. They've learned how to use their phones. That's part of the reason why the regime has shut down the internet. Uh, but but they don't. you don't need the internet. There are a lot of apps now 
that uh, don't need the internet in order to communicate between apps. I, I forget how it works, but it's phone to phone to phone to phone. So they, they create networks of the phones without having to connect to a, a server, to, to the internet itself. Uh, so they're using those technologies to coordinate the demonstrations. If they get Starlink, they can they can elevate that even better. Um, anyway, it, to be watched, let's see if the Biden administration rises to the challenge. Let's see if the West supports them. Uh, again, the Biden administration is in this position where they're negotiating a nuclear treaty with Iran. Maybe they don't want to upset the mullahs too much. Maybe that's uh, they're silent about it. I guess it's a mesh network, Enric, yes. Uh, so let's see what happens. But my hope is that somebody will stand up and, and call this and actually, and actually uh, you know, um, embolden the Iranians, not just to demonstrate in the street, but to overthrow the regime. I mean, that is the, you know, Iran is an amazing country. Uh, the Iranian people are amazing people. They've always been the intellectuals of the Middle East. Uh, you know, when the, when the Arabs, when uh, the Arabs first conquered the entire Middle East uh, the, after Muhammad and, and spread Islam everywhere, well, the, 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 the people who ran the caliphates, the people who ran um, the, um, uh, you know, the Arab empire were the, were the, were the Persians. Uh, the, 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 the caliph, the, caliph the, the top guy might have been an Arab, because he had to be, because he had to be a descendant of Muhammad. But the people who actually ran things were the Persians. Uh, of course, being intellectual also makes you open to bad ideas. Um, so they, they also take their religion more seriously than others do. But uh, le let's hope, but there's also a strong secular movement within Iran. There's a strong secular forces within Iran that were established there by the Shah. And, and the, the, there's a lot of Iranians who has been exposed to the West. Um, and you can see that in the demonstrators and these women that have had enough of it. If they could overthrow this regime, I mean, Iran, A, you'd immediately have a dramatic decrease in the price of oil. Uh, gas prices would tumble. Iran has vast, uh, you know, uh, reserves of, of oil they can't get to because they don't have Western technology to go and, go and actually drill for it. Uh, Iran becoming a more westernized country would, would change the Middle East in such a dramatic fashion. It would change the global situation. It would have, uh, you know, uh, uh, global strategic implications that are massive and all positive. So uh, for all kinds of reasons, for the sake of the people in Iran and for all of us' sake, we should do whatever we can to promote liberty and freedom in Iran. Short of, you know, and. My argument was we should we should bomb the hell out of every piece of this regime's, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, autocratic infrastructure. So to help the demonstrators, we should support the demonstrators explicitly. That won't happen. But given that won't happen, maybe we can support them in covert ways or maybe we support them in uh, morally. Um, I think it's this is the one regime where uh, the United States is justified in, and indeed should, uh, should uh, be actively, militarily, covertly, whatever way is most efficient, uh, active in undermining the regime and destroying it, whether it's assassinating the Supreme Leader, whether it's bombing the, 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 the homes, which is the, 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 the center of learning. Um, but, but yes, you, you, we should be actively helping the Iranian people bring about regime change uh, in Iran. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, 
Thank you. I very much appreciate it.